Today we gather for the fourth Sunday of Easter in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. And let us put ourselves before God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you come as light in the midst of darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come as peace in the midst of conflict. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come as wisdom in the midst of confusion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries and continue to be renewed through the grace of Jesus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel Know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. The Lord is 
my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters, he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Spare table for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed, anointed with oil. My cup, my cup. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days. All the days, all the days of my life In the Lord's own house shall I dwell Forever and ever The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have been returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Lord 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. O oh Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. My brothers and sisters, our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Probably three or four years ago, sometime before the pandemic, time gets confused, I was blessed to go on a trip to Ireland. And one of the places we stopped was where they were showing a demonstration of how the sheep, I guess shepherds, the sheep herders, we had a big field and they had three different groups of sheep there. They had three of these, uh, I guess, shepherds. And each one had their own special whistles and clicks and sounds and whatever. Well, they were, first of all, they were doing it in, in Irish, so who knows what they were saying. You can already understand half the people in Ireland and those are the sober ones. So all of a sudden, there was, I was fascinated that different sheep would hear the voice of their, their owner, their shepherd, and start coming down. And of course, they had sheep dogs to help to move the sheep faster because sheep are really slow and dumb. But the sheep knew that when the shepherd made this noise, all of a sudden, these sheep kind of came to attention and started wandering down. And then his sheep dogs kind of sped the process up. But they knew his voice. And that's why when Jesus uses his example of the gospel, People, even 2,000 years ago, knew that the sheep knew their own shepherd. Why? Because the shepherds want to make sure they get to good pasture and protects them and helps them and takes care of them. Well, the analogy is how easily is it for us to hear the voice of Jesus. You know, Jesus is always talking to us through scripture, through other people, through the quiet of our hearts. But often there's so much noise around and so many folks are so busy on their screen all the time, it's amazing God gets through it all at any point in life. But the voice of Jesus is there. So just think for a second, how are, what are the opportunities that you have to hear the voice of Jesus? It might be, as someone said to me recently, they were here for Easter Sunday. They said, all of a sudden Easter sounded different this year, even though I've been coming to church for a long, long time. It spoke to where I was at right now in some of my own struggles and how I needed not to get stuck on my Good Fridays. So it's amazing how as we hear the scriptures over and over again, they often sound different because we're in a different place. Then we're able to more clearly hear Jesus because of our own issues, needs, struggles. So I think for many of us, we hear Jesus also through other stories. I know on the Impact Retreat this year, many people said to me, wow, when someone shared their struggle and how they found God in the middle of that struggle, it helped me realize that God has been with me sometimes when I forgot about it. So it's amazing that often through other people's stories, we're able to connect the dots and say, oh, that was the voice of Jesus. And I know sometimes for myself, some days when I'm just quiet enough to listen and I'll hear that voice of Jesus in the back of my head, this little quiet voice saying, Michael, I got you here. Why are you worrying? You spend more energy worrying than you need to. Just get the work done. So I just invite us as we continue through our journey of Easter to ask ourselves, where do we need to 
get more tuned in to hear the voice of Jesus. Just like in the old radios, you had a dial to turn. If you didn't t- dial properly, you wouldn't hear the voice of anything. Well, if we tune in ourselves more clearly, we often can hear the voice of Jesus. See, Jesus is like that radio station. He's always broadcasting. We have to be receiving. And if we hear his voice, then we can choose to respond. So I invite us this week to choose to more intentionally listen to the voice of Jesus in the scriptures, to the voice of Jesus as often we hear in those in need, the lonely, the old, the poor, the struggling, and the voice of Jesus in our hearts. It's amazing. Jesus is always there to go and give us grace and wisdom and strength. The question is, are we listening? Amen. Let us pray together our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, a life for the world to come. Amen. Let us lift up to the Lord our needs and needs of our church. For all of our newly baptized and confirmed that they may grow in the faith of our church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For all victims of gun violence here in D.C. and throughout the country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the health of Pope Francis, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we lift up to you these and all those needs that weigh in our hearts. We make them known in confidence through your son Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we prepare the altar. I again thank all of you for your generosity and your support. Your generosity helps a whole lot of folks who are still really trying to balance themselves again after changes in the food stamp program and other kind of support programs that have now ended after the pandemic. So we have even more and more people who keep coming to us asking for help. Lord God, we ask that you bless this bread, this wine, fruit of the field and fruit of the vine, so it soon becomes the very body and blood of Jesus. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice of yours becomes acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always delight in these paschal mysteries and be continually renewed by them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but especially during this Easter season when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. We therefore join all the angels as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sitting on your spirit, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed into the willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks, thanks that you have helped, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all of the women and men who lead and guide the church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Martin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. I invite those who are blessed to have others with you to share a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, it takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to ask the risen Lord to come into your hearts, to open up your ears and your heart to hear God's word around you and within you. This is the body of Christ. Bye. 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to pray with me our family prayer for justice and human dignity, crafted by Cardinal Gregory and the bishops of our diocese. Loving and faithful God, we come to you, Father, to ask it through your Son, Jesus, in a communion with the Holy Spirit, you help us in the battle against America's original sin of racism that divides us from being in the body of Christ that we are called to be as your children. We implore you to give us your wisdom so that we may build a community founded on the gospel message, the life and dignity of all people from the womb to the tomb and to live in communion like the divine communion of the Holy Trinity. Bless parents, they may form their children of faith to love one another regardless of skin color, ethnicity, and national origin, just as Jesus loves us. Bless and protect all of us as we live out our faith and be an instrument of your peace, as St. Francis said. Fill us with a thirst for justice and righteousness. Hear our prayer and give us the courage, compassion, and perseverance to root out any form of injustice within our communities and to bring the healing love of Christ to all in need. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Church, hasten to help us and intercede on our behalf so that our archdiocese can continue to witness to the gospel message of the life and dignity of all people. Amen. Our announcements, coming attractions, the first Sunday of May, May 7th is First Communion. Uh, that Sunday, since it's the first Sunday of the month, we will also live stream that Mass. Our Pentecost concert is the first Sunday in June, June the 4th at 5 p.m. We will also live stream that. and It'll be on YouTube sometime after that. Next, this, next Sunday, May 7th, is the sign-up for sh the Share Food Program. The three specials this month are cereal and steak at $37, ribs for $34, the burger special for $25. So I guess we're trying to get stuff that people can use for Memorial Day weekend because the food comes in two weeks later. That's all I know so far. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord continue to give us strength to open our hearts and our eyes to hear the voice of Jesus within us and around us. Let the church say, Amen. May the Lord give blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.